Hello everybody. This video accompanies Notebook 4 in the series of videos Exploratory Computing with Python. My name is Mark Bucker and I work at the Delft University of Technology. Today's topic is functions. Functions are pieces of code that are grouped together for a certain task. And the idea about grouping them in a function is that you can test them separately and better yet, you can use them later again. We've already used some functions in the past, such as the plotting function or the cosine function, which we imported from packages, but today we'll learn how to write our own function. We start the regular way. We import numpy as np, we import matplotlib.py plot as plt, and we tell IPython to put all the matplotlib figures in line. We'll start out with, by writing a function for a parabola y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. You run the code at the top, and we'll start writing a function. Every function is called a def in Python. So every function should start with the three letters def and then the name of the function. Let's call it test func today. Then you need an open parenthesis and you have to pass certain variables to the function. You don't have to pass one, you can pass multiple ones. It's up to you when you write the function. In our case, the only thing we're going to pass to start off with is the variable x. Then we close the parenthesis and we add a colon. Now we start writing the function. And you notice, just like for the for loop and the if function, IPython, Jupyter Notebooks, automatically indent. So now we're inside the function. Any code we write here when we're indented is part of the function. So let's see, we have a, we have to give it a value, so say a equals equal to 1 b is equal to 2, and c is equal to 3, and then y is equal to a times x squared plus b times x plus c. And in this last part of the statement, we want to return this value of y, and the syntax for that is simply return y. Now if I hit shift enter, I have defined this function. So in the next code cell, I can call this function. I can write test func open the parenthesis, and if I now hit shift tab, which I'm doing right now, right away you see the uh, signature of the function pop up and it tells us you have to call it with a variable x. So let's give it a value, say two, and we hit shift enter, and it nicely returns the value 11. Notice that any variable you define inside a function is not available outside the function unless you return it. So if I type here, print a, Python tells me name a is not defined. Why is that? Well, this a is only defined inside the function, so only the function knows what a is, but outside the function we don't. Which is a nice way to protect your data from inside your function from that of outside the function. The only thing that's returned is y, and we can store that. We can call this any variable we want, say let's call it z. So we say z is equal to test func2, and we print z. It nicely prints 11. The value of y is returned, and the syntax here is okay. Whatever this test func returns is stored in this new variable, and in this case, I've called that variable the z. The syntax, let's get rid of this error statement. The syntax, uh, the documentation of the test func, I go back in these parentheses and I hit shift tab again, is not very useful. If I click on this plus sign, there's not any, no other documentation on this function. Why is that? Well, because we never wrote any additional um, information. If you want to add additional documentation, you have to add that to the function. And when you add it to the function, you have to do the additional documentation between triple quotes. Quote, quote, quote. And then this is additional information. And it can be as long as you want. More info. Uh, and when you're, when you're done with the extra info, you end again with the triple quotes here. So if I run this function again, so I do shift enter, so now this test func is the new function I've write, written here, and if I go to this function here and I now hit shift tab, when I end the, in between the parentheses, shift tab, then you see you get that additional information here. And you, like I said, you can make it as long as you want. In the function we've written here, we've only passed it one variable, we've passed it x. So let's copy this function here. What if I want to also pass it a, b, and c? I could do that, a, b, c. So now if I call this function, I have to give it the value of x, but also of a, b, and c. 
I can get now get rid of these. I hit Shift Enter. If I now call Test Funk 2, I get an error message. And I expected that because it says Test Funk missing three required positional arguments A, B, and C. And you can see it in the function here. I should have applied supplied A, B, and C. So let's do that. A was 1, B was 2, and C was 3. If I hit Shift Enter now, it again returns that value of 11. It would be even nicer if we could give A, B, and C default values. And you do that as follows. You, right away in the test, in the function definition, you give it a value. A is equal to 1, B is equal to 2, and C is equal to 3. If I hit Shift Enter now, I can now call this function again with just X, because A, B, and C have a default value. If I supply, if I run this function now, it nicely returns 11. But if I um, want to change any of the other variables, a, b, or c, I can add those here after I supply the variable that doesn't have a default argument. The, the variable that doesn't have a default argument is called a regular argument or a positional argument. The other ones that have default values are called keyword arguments. And you can just simply pass them by typing the new value, a is equal to 7. Or I could make a7 and C10 and leave B the same as it was. I could even change the order. I could first supply C and then supply A. All that matters is that you should supply the positional arguments first in the order that they are there. In this case, there's only one and it's X. And the keyword arguments you can supply if you want in any order you wish, or you can not supply them, in which case they will use the default value. We can call our test func with an array of values for x. For example, x is equal to np.lin space, say for minus 2, the 2 with 100 values, and I'll say z is equal to test func of x. Then I can plot plt.plot x versus z. And we get a nice parabola. We've calculated with one statement, just like we did before, 100 values of this parabola. Now, you cannot always call an array, um, call a function with an array, especially when there is a, an if statement inside the function. Let's take our test func and write a new function. I'm copying this one down. I'm going to give it a different name, say test func2. Um, and I'll say, all right, if x is smaller than 0, then I'm going to supply y is ax squared plus bx plus c, but else, so that's when x is larger than zero, I'm going to give it, well, I'm going to just type that in, y is equal to a times x squared plus c. Uh, so the function is continuous at x equals zero, but the, uh, the derivative of the function is not. And let's, let's execute this function. So test func2 now exists. And I can call it test func2. I can give it the value of 2, and it will nicely return a value. But if I want to call this with an array x, and let's also store it in a variable z, I get an error message. And the error message is, it's for this line, if x is smaller than 0, then the error message is, the truth value of an array with more than one element is ambiguous. And that makes sense because x has negative values and positive values. So when it says if x is smaller than 0, it doesn't know is that true or is that false because there's a whole array of trues and falses. Now how to change that? What we could do is we could rewrite this function to take care of that or we could take the easy way out. There's something called a, f a function from NumPy that's called vectorize and it can vectorize this function such that NumPy will loop through all the values of x for you and return the correct values uh, for z as an array. To vectorize a function, we use the vectorize function of NumPy, <laughs> np.vectorize, and the function we want to vectorize is the test func2 function. And the np.vectorize function actually doesn't return values, it returns a function. So let's call it new func. If we execute this now, then this new func is a function that will call test func2 for you, but you can call new func with an array. So if we now call z with new func, which is the vectorized 
form of test func2 it will work and we can print or plot x versus z in a graph oh and it's called of course plt.plot and there's our function and like i said the function is continuous but on this side it's ax squared plus bx plus c and on this side is ax squared plus c as a final example let's try to write a function that counts the number of letters in a text and the text i select is this part of the wikipedia page of guido van rossum and guido was the guy who started the python language back in the 90s in fact i also copied uh, his photograph which you'll see here when he was still working for google and the text i've uh, pasted in this new text variable so if i say print text then you'll see a little piece of his wikipedia page and we want to write a function that counts the letters for example how many a's how many b's how many c's let's see a function starts with def and we're going to give the function a name count letters and it should we should give it a letter to count let's say a letter and a text to check so we'll give it a letter and a text we enter a colon and now we're inside the function um, how do we do that again we uh, need a counter the count is equal to zero and then for uh, a in text you're going to loop through all the text if a dot lower the lowercase equivalent of that letter is equal to the letter that we entered also lowercase then the count is upped by one plus equal plus equal one and when we're done with that we return the count let's see we hit shift enter and see if we can call that so we call count letters and we want to count the letters a in the text that we call text we hit shift enter and it returns 33 times the letter a now you could go back in here and see if that is indeed correct um, I venture to say it is let's see if we can count the number two that's also a, it's not really a letter but it's a number let's count the letter two on the number two see if that appears and that appears once and you can see here in 1982 the two only appears once so I think we might have done this correctly of course when you write a function you need additional testing um, but let's for now assume it's correct and see if we can count all the letters of the alphabet in the for loop so we define a new variable called alphabet which is a b c all the way through z and we say for letter in alphabet so it loops through all those letters print the letter oh print open parenthesis the letter uh, comma and then the letter we have letter appears um, and then we call our count letters function count letters function we give we pass it the letter that we have which, we, which is indeed called letter and the text that we want which you also call text and then times and we hit shift enter and we get the letter a appears 33 times b twice c 11 all the way through z which occurs zero times that is all i had for you today i hope to see you next time